This tutorial is supposed to be as simple as possible, so while I'm leaving out some details, I'm trying to make sure to make it easy to understand for as many people as possible. Make sure to save your files throughout because I'm doing this in one take, I won't, but make sure to um, pay attention to what you're doing. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about making a visualizer for music using Blender. First, you're going to need a couple things. You need the GTOX add-on, which you can find in the description. Download that, you'll get a zip file. You can extract it to a file location and you'll get this folder. After that, you need to download Blender. You can find it on Steam or you can find it from their site. After that, make a folder that you can contain your contents in. In that folder, which I have here, make sure to have another folder for images and your video as well as your audio file. For easier access, copy this file out with Control c Next, you want to open up Blender. To start off, you want to do a few things. We're going to go over here to File, User Preferences, and System. Here, you're going to select whether or not you're using your CPU or GPU. If you have a GPU, it'll render a lot faster and it'll take less time. Otherwise, your CPU, but that tends to take more time. Next, go to Add-ons. I want to go to Install Add-on from File. Go to here, Paste. Go back one so you're on your desktop or wherever the file location is. Mine just is closer to here. Click on GX Audio. Then you want to select this file and install add on from file. Hit refresh. The next step is to change your frame rate to 29.97. After that, click A, then X to delete everything in the scene. Next, Go to your video sequence editor from the, the scene right here. Zoom out a little bit. Following that, you're going to go to add, then sound. Paste this route in here. Make sure to add sound strip. Now you can see that uh, the number of frames is going to be in this area right here. Since this is a small file for tutorial, mine's going to have 349 frames. You're going to want to put this number into the end frames. So I have 349, I'm going to put 349. Otherwise, do the same. And depending on your frame rate, it'll also change the number of frames that you will have. After that, you're going to go to the 3D view. Next, you're going to go to the scene. Then recreate visualizer base. Rotate this a little bit using the middle mouse wheel. Next step is to scroll down and go over here to your account. If you want to have a lot of um, pegs for your visualizer, you want to increase the number. If you want less, you can use less. I personally like to use 256. The more you use, the longer it will take to render and potentially the longer it will take um, for the animations to load. After that, I'm going to scroll down here. The channel is where the sound is routed to. So I'm going to use the right channel and you're going to go to the right file. Paste the file location, select the audio again. After doing that, you're going to want to change the start frame to one so that it starts at the beginning of the project. You can leave these values alone. Following that, click A twice to select everything. Click rotate twice, then X. Change this to negative 90 so that it lies flat on its side. After that, you're going to want to click rebake animation data. This can take some time. The longer your animation or file, the longer it's going to take. And it's going to say not responding up here, but you don't have to worry about that. Now that, now that the animation is done, scroll out a little bit and you can hit play. So as you can see, the animation and the audio are synced up correctly. Following that, you're going to want to go over to this section right here and create a new layer. Hit shift, then A, 
greater mesh, then circle. Change this value to the number of pegs you had. I used 256, so I'm going to use 256. Then here, I'm gonna change my radius to four. Following that, I'm gonna hit Alt, then C, and click Curve from Mesh to Text. After that, I'm gonna go back to the first zone. From here, I'm going to delete these, so I like the circle by clicking on one of these bars. I'm gonna hit A. Then I'm going to click this tool right here, Object Modifiers, Add a Modifier, and select Curve. The object you're going to modify from is the circle and this peg will appear. After doing that, you're going to click Control L and go to Modifiers and this will appear. If you're using uh, fewer pegs or more pegs, this will look different. If you're using less pegs, it will cover like a half circle or quarter circle depending on how many you use. Mine is overlapping. After that, I'm going to go back to the, this tab right here and I'm going to go to spacing. I'm going to decrease mine and then I'm going to move it back to a full circle. You can rotate using the middle mouse wheel. After that, you want to go to view and you're going to go to top. Then hit Shift A and add a camera. Click the View tab and go to Camera. You don't see much, but that's not much of a worry. You can hit G then Z and move your mouse down and up to adjust the view. From here, you can scrub the sound to see where it peaks and see if it will fit within your frame. I, I want it closer, so I'll hit G Z again. Test this one more time. That looks good. After that, you want to hit Shift then A and add a new plane. Change the radius of that plane to 15 and the Z to negative one. This will move it backwards so that the visualizer is in front of the plane. You can rotate using the middle mouse wheel to check and you can move it up or down using this blue arrow. Go back to the view of camera. Now this plane is selected so you can go over here to um, textures or select new and in diffuse click in this box you can use hex HSV or RGB. And I want my background to be black, so I'm going to select black. After that, I'm going to rotate. Deselect the plane by clicking on one of these bars. Add a new material. And um, select a color. This color I like a lot because it has a lot of contrast and it's very bright. After doing that, you're going to want to click specular, use the same color, and click this check mark box for shadeless. Following that, click B, select the area, control L, and link the materials. From doing that, you will have all the materials in the same color. Good of you, camera. Now after doing this, you want to go back to this view right here for camera and change the resolution to 100%. Depending on how fast your computer is or how good your GPU is, it will um, render faster or slower. It can take days, hours, minutes, depending on what you're using. I have a big computer, so it's going to render fast for me. So I'm going to go ahead and click this button and it should render.
Once you are done rendering, you can go ahead and open up a new file. From here, go straight to the video sequence editor and insert the images that you just used. Copy the file location, go to here, hit A, and add image strip. This is what it would be. Now we use 29.97 for the frame rate, but for the video to sync with the audio, you want to go for 30 FPS. Change the end frames to the same. I have 349, so I'm gonna go back to 349. After that, make sure that the this is scaled back up to 100%. Go to your save file. And I'm gonna go to video and change the name of my video to tutorial because this is what I'm using. Now we want to change this from PNG to MPEG and for encoding you can just use the preset H.264 and MP4 and you can leave the rest the same. This process will um, take a lot less time because it's just compiling images. So you can go ahead and click this um, animation button and it will render again. And as you can see, it's gonna take a lot less time. And because my computer's faster, it will do it a lot faster. You also have a loading bar up here, which will tell you the progress, how many frames you've gone through down here and your end frames right here. Once this is done, you can go ahead and close the program. Next up, you want to open any video editing software you have. Um, you can use or find any free software on Windows, like HitFilm Express, or you can use iMovie. First, I'm going to start by importing my media. I'm going to start off with my logo, with a transparent file. Then I'm going to import the audio as well as the video that we just made. Go to the editor, insert the video, the image on top of that, and the audio below. Make sure to stretch the image to the length. After that, select the image, go to transform and change the positioning. 35% is a good ratio for me. Hit play. As you can see, the audio is synced up really nice. This is a really good method of adding a logo. You can add text, you can add other things to your videos, but this is what I like to do to keep mine simple. After that, just export the video. From here, you can open up the video and you can see that it works. Thanks for watching.